with his father, father with a little bow tie on. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Shada Karheit, and I stay today. I think, I think in German, still. Yeah, you know, it's, oh, yeah, it's was ich aber lausgehen, das du, oder? You know, to talk to myself in German. It's an absolute wonderful experience. I've lived here all my life, 59 years, and, you know, I really don't know anything else. In fact, I've lived in the same house for 59 years. We're not stuck in 1932. A lot of people would come here kind of expecting us to be horse and buggies and, you know, and that's, that's not us. We don't have a grocery store. We don't have a discount store. We don't have all these little things that you see in any other community, and we never will. They came from Germany, and then they lived in Ebenezer, New York. And then they decided they had outgrown that area and the city was moving in on them. They wanted more rural. And they came to Iowa and they saw this river valley and they said, this is it. And that's how it came to be. I am Isabella Schaefer, East Amana. I've lived in this house for 62 years, but I was born in middle. The Amana Colonies was a communal lifestyle. I lived next door to communal kitchen when I was a child, and I remember spending time there. And uh, my mother helped with the cooking, well, as all women did. Communal kitchen, uh, there were 55 actually in the seven villages, and the families in the area were assigned to which kitchen they would, uh, would go to. And a lot of us still use those same recipes today, the Amana cooking. And the restaurants do cook some of the things yet, the way it used to be. Hi, my name is Bill Eichsenring, and I am the uh, president and owner of the Akshokin restaurant. We are situated in the Amana dining room, or the founder's room. My father was actually uh, born in this room in 1908, and my father was the founder of the Akshokin. In 1932 is when the communal lifestyle in the community ended. They said uh, to survive in the modern world, they needed to change. Our history is real. It's very authentic and the man is today, you know, you can experience that. Our buildings, our architecture, the culture is still similar to what to what it was then. Businesses that have been here for over 100 years, uh, meat, meat market, meat shop, the furniture shop. We are still one project being built by a craftsman. Almost everything we do here uh, that goes into the piece of furniture, we do ourselves from the piece of furniture to the drawer poles that go on the drawers to almost every wooden piece that goes into a table or into a dresser we make here at the shop. We have the first microbrewery located here in Amana. We were Iowa's only production brewery for almost 25 years. We still try to base our beers, try to keep a lot of them the German style beers. So it's exposing everybody in Iowa to another German tradition. There are so many things to do and see, and what makes a man special is quality. The Amana colonies are very artisanal. We still handcraft a lot of things. You know, there's a lot of positives to being a, a business here in Amana, and I think with that comes responsibility of treating your visitors well and, and making them feel that Amana. Some people would like to see a lot of change, in things in a manner. But there are those who resist. You know, that'll always be that way. Living here in my life, I've seen a lot of changes, but the main thing is, is that we are, we are real. We are one of the largest uh, historic landmarks, national historic landmarks in the country. I don't think you can go anywhere else in Iowa, walk down the streets, and go back 100 years in time. And that's our whole village here in Amana. Even though there are many what we say, outsiders now. I think the nucleus, the Amana people who were born and raised here, they are still very close, I think. And that'll stay that way, you know, the allegiance to Amana. <laughs>